Alright guys, it is Friday, November 26, 2021 at 2.41 p.m. Hope everybody had a nice Thanksgiving dinner last night. Hope everything went well for everybody. Alright, let's start with the Bible verse of the day. We have dailyverses.net verse of the day. It says, The wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous give generously. Psalm 37, 21. Alright, let's start with Subway Future Uncertain after death of 90-year-old co-founder. Okay, so the Subway restaurant's uh, future is uncertain. It says, after recovering from a pedophile spokesman, a yoga mat scandal, and a fake tuna lawsuit, the future of Subway restaurants is up in the air following the death of the fast food giant's co-founder, Peter Buck. Buck, who became a billionaire after uh, loaning Fed DeLuca $1,000 in 1965 to open a sandwich shop in Bridgeport, Connecticut, died last week at the age of 90. So the um, chain is up in the air. It says the New York Post notes the sandwich chain has been in negotiations for a potential sale uh, to restaurant brands international. The Brazil-based owner of Burger King the talk fizzled, leading to RBI purchasing smaller competitor firehouse subs for $1.1 billion. Negotiations fell apart, however, due to part of the disagreements between Buck and DeLuca's widow, Elizabeth, and each party has been controlled 50% of the chain since DeLuca's uh, 2015 death. According to the report, one of them, it wasn't clear which, has, has been holding out for a higher price than the other. According to the source familiar with the negotiations, the company has denied any potential sale. Subway is not for sale, said a spokesperson in a statement. Uh, sales momentum has steadily been building since the beginning of 2021, and the launch of Subway Eat Fresh campaign this summer accelerated the momentum. We expect to exceed our sales prediction in 2021 by more than $1 billion. Some dealmakers are skeptical, noting that Subway two years ago hired John Chisdy to be his first permanent chief executive. Chisdy's most notable achievement, they say, may have been his stint with CEO of Burger King, which culminated in the chain getting sold in 2010 to restaurant brands. Since taking the reins at Subway, Chisdy has squeezed franchises for cash, raising fees, and tightening lease restrictions, motives that can typically precede a sale. Now, however, the dealmakers say the thinking Buck and Beluka's heirs remain a mystery. This throws a wrench into the sale. One source said that Buck's death last week, knowing that Buck was a widower. Now the shares might be tied up in probate. Alright, guys, so who knows what the future of Subway will be, but I'll leave the link to the article so you guys can check it out. Alright, next. Black Friday turns red on terrible news. Global markets crater on the new variant panic. The Friday after Thanksgiving is called Black Friday because that's when retailers finally turn profitable for the year. Not so much for market. However, because this morning is red as far as I can see, the culprit, the same one we discussed last night, the emergence of the new coronavirus strain detected in South Africa, known as B1. 1529, which reportedly carries an extremely high number of mutations and is clearly very different from previous incarnations, which may drive further waves of disease being by evading the body's defenses, according to South African scientists, said Anthony Fauci. So a lot of shops still on red because of the terrible news about the COVID variant. Let's take a look at the story about the COVID variant. It says a heavily mutated COVID variant emerges in Southern Africa. Here's what we know so far. The World Health Organization has heavily mutated version of the virus that causes COVID-19 poses a possible increased risk of infection. Who labeled the strain as Omicron? Uh, the WHO or the World Health Organization labeled the strain as Omicron and said it is a variant of concern. South Africa scientist Tulio de Oliveira said the media briefing that the variant contains more than 30 mutations to the spike protein, the component of the virus that binds to cells. The World Health Organization on Friday said heavily mutated strain of COVID-19 variant of concern 
now named Omicron, with a possible increased risk of reinfection. This variant has a large number of mutations, some of which are concerning. The WHO said in a statement released on Friday, preliminary evidence suggests an increased risk, risk of infection with this variant as compared to others. The variant known as B11529 has been detected in small numbers in South Africa, WHO world officials said, with reports on Friday morning of cases being found in Israel and Hong Kong. However, the number of Omicron cases appears to be increasing in almost all South African provinces, the WHO reported on Friday. Alright, I'll leave you a link to this article as well, and apparently there's a new virus on the board. Alright, next. Southern California utility cuts power to customers on Thanksgiving as wildfire risks surge. The latest utility company in Southern California cut power to thousands of customers amongst higher elevations of Los Angeles, leaving many households without electricity for Thanksgiving. Uh, Edison International Southern California Utility cut power to 32,036 residential and commercial building structures in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, San Bernardino, and Ventura counties to prevent windstorms from toppling power lines that would stroke fires in a drought-stricken region. The utility projects up to a quarter million customers could lose service around Los Angeles and San Diego. So dry winds and drought-stricken conditions in Southern California are a product of La Nina weather pattern, which causally, uh, usually brings drier conditions to the region during the winter. So they got fire, uh, critical fire weather expected on the 24th. And today is the 26th, so who knows if it's still uh, being pushed the wind being pushed into the region. It says the National Weather Service warned the probabilities for wildfires are rising and windy conditions will sustain throughout Friday. On Wednesday, the red flag warnings was posted by Santa Barbara and the U.S.-Mexico border. All right, so Southern California, heads up for the power outages. All right, next. One dead and three injured after a leak at a nuclear power plant in Tarragona, Spain. One dead and three injured after a leak in a nuclear power plant. Alright, we have a leak of carbon dioxide at a nuclear power plant in Spain on Wednesday. Killed one person and left three injured, emergency services said. The fault at the ASCO plant in the region of Catalonia uh, was related to a fire prevention system and has no connection with the radioactive material, the Catalan Fire Service said in a tweet. Thank goodness that it wasn't related to the radioactive material. It was related to a fire prevention system. Alright, I'll leave the link so you guys can check out this article about the nuclear power plant. Alright, next. Newly identified active faults under Long Beach and Seal Beach, California, intensively rattles near Los Angeles. So, the Los Angeles Basin is home to countless faults that range from thousands of feet of 100 miles uh, in length. These include normal faults, reverse faults, thrust faults, and strike slip faults. The Newport Inglewood Fault Zone a series of faults that extends between Newport and Inglewood, California, is one of the major sources of seismicity in the area. Many experts believe this zone is associated with several notable earthquakes, particularly in the Long Beach, uh, Seal Beach area, including the 1933 magnitude 6.4 Long Beach earthquake. Less widely known are the basin's numerous near-surface faults, some of which were recently identified in the immediate Seal Beach area. A, size, a scientist at 3D uh, Seismic Solutions, a seismic data consulting company, uh, recently discovered one particular active fault in the area. The finding highlights the difficulty faced by emergency managers, city planners, and engineers in knowing potential hazards when planning for future earthquakes. So we have a new fault in California, in the Long Beach area. Alright guys, so I'll leave you guys a link so you guys can check this out more and take a look for yourselves about the newer uh, faults popping up in California. Alright.
And finally, we have next five asteroid approaches from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory and California Institute of Technology. We have the first asteroid, 2021 VM, the approximate size of 93 feet, about airplane size. The closest Earth approach is 2,230,000 miles from Earth. Uh, it will be passing by on November 27th, 2021. Then we have asteroid 2021 VO12, which is 160 feet in size, uh, about airplane size. The closest Earth approach is 1,740,000 miles from Earth. It will be passing by on November 28th, 2021. Then we have the next asteroid, 1994 WR12, which is about 390 feet in size, about the size of a building. The closest Earth approach is 3,820,000 miles from Earth. It will be passing by on November 29th, 2021. Then the next asteroid is 2021 UP4, about 160 feet in size, about an airplane size. Uh, the closest Earth approach is 3,310,000 miles from Earth. It will be passing by on December 4th, 2021. And then the last asteroid on the list of five is 2021 VX7. It will be 130 feet in size, about the size of an airplane. And the closest Earth approach is 3,530,000 miles from Earth. And it will be passing by on December 6th, 2021. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Hit like and subscribe for more news. Uh, pray for the people of California who have to deal with the power outages then also have to deal with the new fault lines. Uh, pray for the people who are now facing a new variant. I don't know if the variant is actually factual or if it's just something that the government's coming up with or if we really are dealing with a new variant. But please pray for everybody. All right, guys, see you next time. God bless you guys.